All right, you guys, podcast time. We got the equipment and the perfect business plan. Give our show away for free and tell no one how to find it. Ready? Welcome to another episode of the Brand X Podcast. I am one of your hosts, John. With me, my co-host, Deuce. Como esta, bitches? And also, Joe. Telly ho. And uh, what a wild, wild day this has been. We're just making it. Under know, the wire. Under the wire. <laughs> uh, I got up this morning. I had all this stuff planned to do. I came downstairs and looked at my computer, and it says, update for security. I'm like, oh, let me get that done. So I click on, next thing you know, it says, do you want to restart? I go, okay, restart. And then I get this message says, cannot update, cannot update, try again. I try I try four times. I'm like panicking. So I'm like, no, not this. I can't have this computer go down. I mean, this is the lifeblood of this podcast. The BXP studio. Yeah. So well, it's also the lifeblood of your life. Yeah. Of, yeah really. So anyhow, I, I get a hold of my receipt and I look and usually what would happen is I would look at my receipt and it says, oh, yeah, your warranty runs out July 19th. Well, we're doing this like the 21st, I think it is, or the 20th. Yeah. What's the date is? So is it 20th? 21st. Right? 21st. 21st. So usually it would be like two days after the warranty ran out. But it's this it was three days before the warranty ran out. So I jump on the phone and I get this one lady, very nice, spoke perfect English, okay, from Apple Care. Mm-hmm. She kind of walked me through things, and then she's like, I don't know. This might need to set next level up. So then I got another guy on. His name was CJ. <laughs> no, perfect English. Mm. CJ, we did some things here. He's like, uh, listen, I'm sorry about all this weight. You sure you want to do this? I'm like, dude, I got nothing to do until this thing is fixed. And if I don't have to pack this thing up and take it to an Apple store and lose it for a couple of days, I'm all about it. So let's try it. So then he says to me, well, we're going to have to take and completely erase the drive and start over again. And I'm thinking at your time, you think to yourself, what really do I have on my computer that I can't really lose that I can't throw back on there? Mm-hmm. And you think you're like, well, I, I, cause I save all my files to a file serving uh, in the cloud. It's called Dropbox. So all my files are there. I know they are. So I'm not really worried about all that. So I'm like, okay, why not? Let's just erase it. Well, we erased it, which I had to. Mm-hmm. But then you re- don't realize how much stuff you actually had on the computer. You know, so I spent all day. Stuff you know, that doesn't seem important at the time. At the time. So then you go to, you're like, okay, I need this. And you go, oh, got to go get it. So then you got to go back in and download it, set it all and up. remember what the file's name is. Well, not it's not just the, the programs. Like I wanted to use Audacity. I didn't have that. I wanted to use Audition. I had to put all my editing software back on what all that cast? Stuff. you got all that stuff all cast is a internet-based program so that's okay. just that doesn't have to be done with any of that stuff but i lost all my soundboards but johnny for once in his life was smart i back i exported all my boards to dropbox so they were still there so all i had to do was import them now i lost some if since i didn't back it up again i lost some of them that were on there but i got basically all of them there was a couple of them that I was really worried about that I was going to lose. And one of them was it's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. because I wasn't sure, you know, if that, I, you know, I definitely needed that, but I have most of those. Uh, so we're here and we're getting ready to go. And What's I'm, up with the Jimmy? He's been uh, kind of laying low. He has been laying low. Like uh, a cat that shit on the rug. <laughs> you know, he called, he is a show in himself. Really? He is. I mean, I can't get into too, too much because of, the nature of what we talk about. It's but the Jimmy show. It yeah, is the Jimmy have show. have his own podcast. Yeah, he calls me up and he says, you know, you'd be proud of me. So, which means that, you know, normally he would be a jerk off. And now he did something that wasn't so jerk, wasn't <laughs> such a jerk off thing. To do. Less jerk off. <laughs> yeah, less jerk off. Or then he would call me and say, you know, I tried my best, but which I, means dot, 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 dot. <laughs> but. We, you know, like I said, he'll, he'll call me. It's almost like I'm his therapist. Like he'll call me to talk him off the ledge or he'll talk, call me to talk to him so he doesn't kill somebody or, he'll, you know, try to get a calm, cool perspective. And he's calling me. And he's calling you. Yeah, that's how bad this is. Wow. So he's, yeah, he's calling me. So anyhow, so that was that. And uh, I remember when we talked last week, you know, that Luke jumped on Twitter and because we were having a Twitter war and 
Oh, from the Robin Slim? Robin Slim okay. show thing. So then I was listening to uh, Bold and Belligerent, and uh, he had an update. Okay, there's a shitty show that, that he talks about us sometimes, and that's, I guess we consider, you guys consider friends, the Brand X. Yeah, that's us. Um, and they were on there, and they were, they, I don't know what the context was, but they got into an argument with someone. And apparently someone on their show or another show used the your word. And they were freaking out about it. This guy right here, Casey Walsh, oh, God. was freaking out about it. And all I saw was the word the, police comes in. Yeah, all I saw was their their conversation about it. And he was going, "It's never okay to use." <laughs> and um, <laughs> they were in there going. I was uh, thinking he was going to say the N word, and then he the 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 word. <laughs> I think even he thought he was going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not editing Mixing myself. myself too. It just, you know what? It just sounds so stupid to say the N word. Like, saying the, I like, like Lu- I'm, it's what did uh, was Louis C.K. Louis C.K. was like, now I'm hearing. In my mind what's the difference yeah, you're right? making me say because you're a coward because you won't say that you're right. a shitty fucking word. racist yeah. yeah right so anyways so he's in there and he's saying you can never use the word you can never say the word and then uh the other guys in there were like dude you don't know the context he goes it doesn't matter the context Absolutely. oh bullshit and yes it does Get the fuck out of here so i got I, I was just like well i gotta say something so of course I went in there, his name was kc so i said in quotes this is exactly what i said word for word i said hey kc stop whining about words you're starting to sound like oh <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> this resulted in a 12 hour ban. <laughs> <laughs> he only got 12 That's hours for that? Great. Yeah, he only got 12 hours for that. But didn't you get a whole day? Nah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I did. I got 24. <laughs> <laughs> what could you have said that was worse than that? What did I say that I, what did I do? Someone turned me in. Was that the boobies yeah. comment? <laughs> God, I can't remember what it was now. Oh, oh it was something was, about women. Oh, no, wasn't no, no. It? I know what it was. We were busting on. The Tom and Steve show. Oh, 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 the oh, oh and they were yeah. sitting there with two big, giant, twelve-inch penis noses. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and you put them in Nazi uniforms. I didn't put them in Nazi uniforms. Well, so they were, well yeah, you posted uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they, I don't have the skills. The you Photoshop procured them. that photo and you put it on. Twitter. Uh, I uploaded it, it to Twitter. Right, and some. So some, we know what the pecking order is. Right. Somebody complained, and the next thing you know, I was done for twenty-four hours. Okay. Twitter. Jam. So you say the uh, N word. 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Nazis, 24. Wow. <laughs> Again, I don't know what happened with See, now I would Robinson. think that would be the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would too. I think a punishment is a punishment. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, inappropriate speech. but Is yeah. inappropriate speech? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would think so. You know what it well. is? Luke's hotter than you, so he got a lower sentence. He is hotter than me? Yeah, like the sexy teachers that sleep with their students oh. because they're... <laughs> They're hot. So, so yeah. since Luke's hotter oh. than you are, he only got 12 hours. Are you, suggest- and you got 24. You suggesting he has a vagina? No, he is half my age. Yeah. But. Well, he's a dumb kid. He's, you know. Well, I'm not. Listen, if you go back into the archives of this show, I've never, I've never been a real fan of Luke. I think he has a one trick pony. All he does is he just shits on everything. You know, so when we, when he finally did, like we talked about him and talked about, he couldn't take it anymore. So he, he listened to our show or he said he listened to our show. And then he just took this biggest dump all over the show, which I expect well, that. Well, he must still be the, listening to the, the show. The truth in lending disclosure is no, I don't think he we was listening. didn't dump on Luke all the time. John? No, I did. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, I don't even know the kid. I don't know. Yeah. But he, right. he does is Luke. He does what he does. Yeah, yeah he is what he is. I understand but, that. Yeah, this, is, it, this is the dishwasher, but that, right? that, that, that show, well, one he of many be, jobs he, he had. He might be still dishwasher. But that show though. wouldn't be that show without Luke. Everyone that has their true. little that is their true. little magic, and that's his. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. It'd be a completely different animal without him. Well, I guess half the time it is because half the time he doesn't show. Yeah, well, up. this is true. You know, <laughs> if you go to his, Twitter, I was surprised that he was back. <laughs> I know. If you go to his Twitter and you look at his profile, it says Luke the Drifter, and underneath it says Star of the Bold and Belligerent Podcast. <laughs> well, it's good to know he doesn't have any self esteem issues. So. Mm. I guess not. Well, like I said, that he must be listening to our show because no, he I seems don't think, to be. Uh... I, I think he saw everything on Twitter because he also follows other people mm. that were. Yeah, in the if you're on of this. Twitter, it's a pretty yeah. tight community okay. of well, not so that podcasters. I care. No, I mean, well, I'm just right. saying if you if you're on Twitter, the podcasters all follow each other. So, right. so mm-hmm. what you're, you're going to cross paths there if anywhere. So what happens is Josh listens once in a while. So what will happen if Josh hears this, he'll pull it and say, oh. Brand X was talking about you, and then Luke will download it, and then he'll listen to this, and then he'll shit all over us again. You know, Luke's like a dog that drinks seawater. He just blows shit all over everything. It's just one big, giant crap fest. He sounds like someone we knew back in our 20s that used to hang with us. The bitter Asian man? Yeah. Okay. 
in I a way. That. Yeah, because he kind of like six guys in a room could like something. He's the one who said, "Oh no, that thing sucks." Yeah, you know what I mean. Right, he's just a curmudgeon. He's a twenty-five-year-old yeah. curmudgeon. And but it doesn't okay. get better. Yeah. I think he's more of a contrarian. Like okay. you say, that stop sign like is the red, Asian, man. and he'd be like, "No, it's yellow." Okay. You know, yeah. Just, Whatever. Just, I mean, just to get a rise out of you. I think that's his thing. No, I really believe he believes that. I just think you think he believes that the sign is yellow. Well, <laughs> I believe. I think he does it just to get a rise out of people. I believe that he says what he feels. It's just constantly negative. Yeah. I'd say there's no filter, but right. I think that's just his. That's well, his thing. but by the name, by the number of beliefs that I just oh, put yeah, in, yeah, that, that thing, was. You, know. <laughs> you can tell there's no filter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was. John was going to run that. I said, "You might want to like." <laughs> so then John had to jump, man of action, spring into action, and throw it into the editor and throw the bleeps in there. But relatively well. We had to listen to it three three times. Yeah, sure we got. Are we sure we got all the pieces? <laughs> yeah. You don't want that like sneaking past the goalie. That's true. All right, Luke. So we're going to do our best to do a good show for you. Not that you will ever think that it's a good show. It could be the best. We could have the bestest show. The show that was the best of ever podcast, and they wouldn't know. It would be so huge. It'd be yeah. huge. It's kind of like Daffy Duck when he blew himself up. Yeah, but you he can only do it one time. That exactly. was a great trick, Kathy. They loved it. <laughs> yeah, but I can only do it just once. There's a uh, it, don't ever go out and buy a domain name mm -hmm. because well, here's the thing. When I lost that, here's the thing. Lost it. I got it now. You just said it again. <laughs> right, hold on, be quiet. Here's the thing. I got it for next week. <laughs> so anyhow. I bought a domain name. Yes, Larry, you lost another opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, an I'm an economy, Larry. <laughs> He's like the voice of uh, Kermit the Frog that got fired yeah. after 20-some oh, yeah. years. Yeah, Kermit the Frog just got fired because Kermit the Frog had an attitude. The voice of Kermit the Frog had an attitude. He had an edge. Yeah, all he had to do was do exactly what they told him, but all of a sudden now he thinks he knows better than He's Kermit. Like, yeah, he's Kermit. He knows what the character would do just because he's got a hand up a puppet's ass. <laughs> but I digress. We got a message. I got a message from Jason from Matt Talk Online, Jason Bryant. Mm -hmm. Normally, he sends me dead pictures of dead squirrels <laughs> at chipmunks. Yep. But, I, you know, we were talking about before how when we were younger, we got beat as children. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying that if you beat your children, it can lead to brain damage. Bullshit. Yeah. So it says spanking Arrows. leads to mental illness. So your hey, brain is in your ass now. Huh? Yeah. Uh, some, That's what they're saying. Yeah, so it's bullshit. So in other words, the, the human whole race, world is the human race up until about 20 years ago was just was brain yeah, damage. Yeah. And, and, and only, now, replacement. only now. Motherfucker. <laughs> I, I brought the site up. And of course, there's one. And that's got to be a commercial yeah. in there. Got to be a commercial. That's a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. I don't trust. First of all, psychologists are half quackery anyway. It's not an exact. It's not exactly like it's almost astrology as far as, you know, versus say psychiatry, you know, psychiatry, but it's not really like a real science to me. You know? Well, we talked about it on an earlier podcast, and I think you should have a license to be children. Yeah, yeah. Like, see that kid in the Wild Wild last week? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, see, if you had a license to be children when that happened, yeah. you would just start thrashing them. Well, the reason that And kid, then when the police show up, you say, hold on, officer, Here's and my, you produce your license this to is be my children. License, yeah. And the police officer looks at us and says, well, everything seems to be in order here. Carry on. And, you know. Actually, there should have been a license to beat the mother for producing <laughs> such a child. You know? It's but, like that show. What was that show? I can't think of the name of it where the father says something and he smacks the kid and then the the other guy jumps up, he smacks him, and all these people come over, and he starts Oh, you always see that as a meme. They're you using always, it now with Donald Trump, Donald with all Trump the people all... from CNN on it. He's right, just slapping the shit out of him, right, Rachel exactly. Maddow, <laughs> Megyn Kelly. Yeah, it's all one right, of the yeah, better yeah. ones. Yeah. I don't know what show that came I can't from, remember but I see does. it everywhere. It looks like it's a British show, because all the English bobbies come in, the police officers. Yeah, and then he starts smacking them around. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, you know it's from England, because if he did that in the United States, there would be... <laughs> That would be the end of him. That would yeah. be the end of that. Yeah. I, I think they are starting to arm up over there now with the. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 they're every like they're supposed to say that the cops don't have guns, but there's one the traditional one, right? Yeah, the Bobby's, but thing. they have a bunch of them around that are supposed to be stationed oh, yeah. where they can come yeah. and get to them. But right. the, what it says here in the survey, it says that study in Texas says that more a child gets spanked, divined by an open hand on the backside, more likely they are to defy the parents. 
<laughs> now, see, uh, no. this is from a guy who's never been smacked. Yeah. yeah. Because let me tell you something. When you get a good thrashing, yeah. the first thing you do is like, you know what? Bullshit. Yeah. I ain't going to let him do that. I'm not going to succumb to that. I'm going to I'll do it again. Yeah. So, no, that's not what happens. The opposite happens. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what, with my son, there was that it's referred to as the night as the never ending beatings. <laughs> um, because, like, every 20 minutes, you know, he got a beating. So, because he just couldn't keep his mouth shut, he had to have yeah. that last word. And yeah. that, that happened when he was like going into the. See, what happens is with kids, and my, and this is anecdotal, but a lot of people that, that have kids, this might have happened to you. They're great from kindergarten to the fifth grade. Then they go into junior high the attitude. and they get in with a whole bunch of bumper crop of kids that they never met before. Mm-hmm. And some of these kids might not be stellar citizens. They might not have ever been spanked. Right. Well, nor they just might be unruly and then yeah. they start to adjust their attitude. So, and that's where he was. So my son needed an attitude adjustment <laughs> and about every 20 to 25 minutes, he got a beating. And this went on for about four or five hours. But guess what? I never had to do that again. Right. Because he knew you were capable. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. I encourage parents, kick your kids. And I didn't do anything that my parents didn't do to me and Joe. Oh, yeah. My kids. So, I mean, it's just like, in fact, he got beat a lot less uh, because Joe and I were like over the top outrageous. Well, I was always the last word. Oh, you were one you couldn't keep your mouth shut? I was always the last word. That's who wise takes after. (laughs) And so, yeah, so suffice to say, you know, I was getting chased around the house quite a bit by my mother. I don't know if these kids are any better or worse than we were. I, it seems to me they're a little bit worse. I think in some ways they're better, but in most ways they're just worse. I as think they're as- worse in a sense because we would never dream of talking back to an adult. No. Because no. everyone, you know, where you grew up and where I grew up, it was different. Like the majority of the moms were home. Every Mother knew every kid. Even if you didn't hang around with their kids, mm-hmm. they knew who they knew you, you were. were. Yeah. You know, and that mother pipeline, if something was going on, like you knew your mother was going to find out eventually. And the worst thing that you could possibly hear was that when you get home, you're going to be in so much trouble because I'm calling your mother. And yeah. you'd be like, <gasps> you know, right. you, you would yeah. be petrified and you would just like, it was like going, like you were marching to the gallows. Like yeah, just yeah. making that trudge home. Oh, like, in, you know, in and house, my mother would be waiting for me. It was like, literally, you know, you open the door. Hey, you son of a bitch. I was like, right. Yeah. <laughs> Instantaneous right there, retribution. Hey. That was my mother's opening salvo. Hey, you son oh, of a bitch. Oh, the worst was when you walked in the door and she was on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, she'd <laughs> yeah, yeah so. and she'd give you the look. Yeah. Like so. Whip around. Right. So, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, we never would ever dream of like back talking somebody. If an adult told us to not do something, like you're yeah. doing something stupid that kids do, like breaking bottles in the street or, right. you know, you know, or throwing eggs. Right. Or and, it was, paper. and it was common sense. Don't do that. He was the worst for back talking adults. That's the funny yeah, thing. Well, you know, <laughs> like a wise do, do as I say. Well, he would mock them. Do. Yeah. He would mock I them. I would and... imitate their voice. Mm. You know? <laughs> Give you a. <laughs> Gave Huey Cooper the finger on yeah. the fence. Well, he deserved it. Yeah, he did. Deserve that was an epic chase. This guy chased us on a rainy day in April for about an hour and a half. The guy chased you. Oh, yeah, in his yeah. car. Got in his, his car. car. Chased really? Us. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was epic. Oh, I could. We couldn't escape. He almost got me. Yeah, he with the car. Or no, he on tried foot? to stop and then. Yeah, he was dr- well. We used to hang out at the golf course, and there was a creek, and we built a swing. And his house butted up against it. Well, for some reason, he appointed himself the authority of the creek. Yeah. So he get came out, out, get out of here, you kids. And, you know, we were putting up with this bullshit for like, you know, all summer. And we just had enough. So we got on the other side and we started making fun of him. Mocking him. Yeah. We may have dropped our pants and then flashed him our buttocks. <laughs> you <laughs> mooned him. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah a couple yeah, moons. I think that's what it was referred to. Yes. I think it was a mooning. <laughs> you know. So then we, you know, we ran into the golf course. So we're up there like, ah, that asshole, you know. And then the next thing you know, Joe's looking down like, look. And here he comes like Tarzan, like through the through woods, the woods. Oh, yeah. through the bushes and the shrubbery. <laughs> you know, like, wet leaves and things. It was like, so then we ran we up the street off. to the gas station. I'm like, oh, well, that's that. You know, because you're never going to catch yeah, a kid. Adults usually packed it in yeah. after about 50. We were in you the better sick- run. So you're like in the prime shape of your of running away from adults. Okay. Because you had a lot of pra- – we've had a lot of practice up to that point. And – we're at the gas station, so we're getting soda out of the vending machine, and we're like, by this time, we forgot all. Yeah. You know how, like, Ralphie in A Christmas Story, when you're a kid, your mind shifts gears? Yeah, right. You're like, we're totally not even thinking about this, dude. And again, I see 
So, <laughs> yeah, you pick it up. Well, he used to drive a Mercury Bobcat, which looks just like a Pinto. So his car was easily identifiable. Bright yellow with a wood yeah. grain pattern on the side. As like... we're getting sodas at the soda machine, <laughs> I look up 561, and then there's this car veering into the left lane. I'm like, look, it's Wee Wee Cooper again. Yeah, so this guy's driving yeah. like he's in England. He's driving on the <laughs> wrong side of the road right at us. Yeah, it's coming after right, us. Yeah. Right at us. So Jesus. we scattered. So Ed Hasenberg, he just disappeared. He disappeared. No one knows what yeah, happened. He, to him. he could run now, like. Do the, I have to block it? No, nah, because we nah, don't know nah, what nah. happened. No, like, but he just disappeared. We don't even know what happened to him. So and Joe's got asthma, so he can't run all that great. Oh, I could run. He almost got Joe. <laughs> oh, he almost got me. Yeah. <laughs> Joe dove through a split well, rail fence. So I'm running. I didn't realize this guy was as fast as he was. I'm yeah. taking, you know. That big fat bastard. I'm looking over my shoulder. He's getting, he's gaining on me, gaining on me. I had to do, there was a split rail fence ahead. I actually had to do like a Pete Rose dive between the split rails. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you eat Cooper music. Yeah. <laughs> he slams into the fence. He's, oh, I'll get you, you son of a bitch. I'm like scrambling, like, you know, so then I get to the other side of the fence. I'm like, ah, fuck you. I take off right now. He gets just to car. be clear, we didn't use the F word back then. Oh, yeah. it's say. just part of the story. Well, right. yeah. Well, we we did, but I didn't say it to him. Not to him. Yeah. I, I kind of mocked. You wouldn't so, say it to an adult. Yeah. Right. You knew when and when not to use it. So now I'm in. Why? Because you got your ass kicked every time right. you used it. Right. Well, if right. he knew who you were, then you went home. You use the F word. You say, "You right. son of a bitch." Yeah, same thing. No. Yeah, I didn't use it. <laughs> no. <laughs> now we're running around in our neighborhood. Okay, he gets in his car and yeah, he's like he's riding around the block. He's trying in to get in a bobcat, yeah. yeah, with the wood grain signs, looking. Yeah. And he's it's looking. like a, it's a cloudy, damp, wet day. Right like, now, you know that if this happened today, the kid jumps on his phone, calls nine one one, says an adult's chasing, and right, the next yeah. thing you know, yeah, the, the cops come, grab this guy, and cart him off, and he's done. Yeah, the climax of the story for me is I'm out of breath now. I I ditch into a backyard and I'm hiding. Right, then all of a sudden I hear this fucking commotion. I'm like, oh, and I know it's him. Hey, you, I'm going to get you right, right. And then I hear his voice. And, uh, I get like mocking the guy. Like, right? <laughs> so I get up where I am and I look and I'm in a backyard. And on the other side of the yard, there's, there's four fences where the, where the yards all it's come like together. It's like the four states out yeah. west, Colorado, and where the, where the four <laughs> yeah. corners. Right. right. He's standing on the post at that very four corners. And Huey Cooper's at the front yard of the one of the yards. And he's yelling at him. And he's standing. He just... Stands there and just unfurls his little <laughs> finger like this. What a rebel you yeah. were. He looked like a statue. Go, oh, yeah? I'll get you with that finger. Oh, you'll stick, I'll stick that finger up your ass. And then he's going like this and like giving him the two fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the back finger. <laughs> under <laughs> the leg was, finger. What the hell is wrong with this guy? Why didn't he just go home? Ah, we really pissed him off. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. He lost his shit. Well, the next day oh. he took a chainsaw out and an axe and he chopped the bridge up. He couldn't destroy it like because yeah, yeah. we built it that well. It was, it was well so built. So he just chopped it up. But I just wanted to bring that up because I felt that maybe, just maybe, that we were – and again, we do say that in tongue-in-cheek. We got beat. Yeah. There, I mean, I got beat by everybody. I got beat by nuns. I got beat by the neighbors. I got beat by my parents. Mm -hmm. So, I mean – Other kids a, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Music. Nothing wrong with me, right? But anyhow, it's just another point of view. Mm. All right, listen. Just happens to be wrong. Right. <laughs> when we get back after this little break from – uh the Hush Your Face Network. Hush. Hush Your Face. Uh, we'll talk about some nonsense in the news. Hush Your Face is coming straight to your ears. A podcast network that's changing gears. Bringing fresh funky pods with a fresh funky beat. A family of pods that are bringing the heat. There ain't no stopping us. Keep coming back to us. Sick ass pods that'll make you hush. WWW Hush Your Face. WWW Hush Your Face. WWWHushYourFace.com Nonsense in the news. Man grades ex-girlfriend's apology letter. Yeah, this was epic. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. <clears throat> I love this. A college student receives an apology letter from his ex-girlfriend. He graded it and put it online. Then things got really crazy. A 21-year-old student at the University of Central Florida, of course, had a unique response to a verbose Mia culpa letter written to him by his ex-girlfriend. He graded it, sent it back to her, but also posted it on Twitter, prompting the university to suspend him for two semesters. That's like a year yeah. Yeah. for doing this. 
this summer and fall for violating the disruptive conduct and harmful behavior clauses of the student conduct code. All right. Who got harmed? I don't know. Apparently so. the girl, the ex-girlfriend. Yeah, she it. said she that was she harmed. Got, how? Well, let me go on. OK. As Just the joking. Miami, the Miami, bleh, Miami Herald, say that one more time, reported Nick Lutz blocked his ex-girlfriend's cell phone number and any contact on social media. She circumvented that by writing a four-page apology and putting it under the windshield wiper of his car. Lutz photographed the letter, then sent it to his friends, triggering them to suggest he grade the labyrinth of loquaciousness. That's exactly what Lutz did. He wrote notes in the margins in red ink, detailing his ex-girlfriend's useless filling sentences... <laughs> And lackadaisical handwriting, as well as her spelling errors. He wrote, long intro, short conclusion, strong hypothesis, but nothing to back it up. (laughs) Pointing out that when she claimed she hadn't cheated on him, details are important. If you want to be believed, back it up with proof. Need to stop contradicting your own story and pick a side. In the end, he deemed the letter worthy of a grade of 61, a D minus, but offered hope. Revision for half credit will be accepted. Good luck. Lutz's post on Twitter garnered over 121,000 retweets and was liked nearly 340,000 times as of Wednesday afternoon. The Herald reported his lawyer, Jacob Stewart, said lawyer? the, <laughs> said the <laughs> ex-girlfriend felt she was being cyberbullied. She uh. went to the Vol- Volusia County Sheriff's Office, but no charges were filed. Because she, nothing was wrong. Nothing happened. She well. went to UCF where she wasn't a student and filed a grievance. Weeks later, Lutz found out he was suspended for summer and fall 2017 for violating the disruptive conduct and harmful behavior clauses of the student conduct code. Lutz's lawyer called the decision a violation of his client's First Amendment rights. I think the damaging thing here is how does UCF decide what's morally harmful? There was nothing derogatory about it. It was obvious he was making fun of her, but that's the beauty of the Constitution. Let's told WFTV, if they can do that to me, it can happen to almost anybody. That's upsetting. On Wednesday, UCF agreed to give Lutz an appeal. They rescinded his previous sentence. So he's allowed to go back? Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, apparently. So. I mean, my good. See, yeah. here's but the, that's genius. Oh, yeah. It yeah, is okay. genius. Not that I well, haven't done anything like well, that. Well, here's, the, here's the thing. <laughs> here's okay, the thing. he, he um, in this day and age, I agree with him, by the way. I mean, if you want to post it, but... Nowadays, there's like an expectation of confidentiality. Right. If you, I mean, like if you have like, say, naked, let's say you're a woman for whatever reason decides, I'm going to take naked pictures of myself and send them to my boyfriend. Right. And you Which break is illegal. Up, right. And you break up. Which is up. totally illegal. Well, if you break up and he posts it on the internet, now you're in big fucking trouble. Right. But when, so, if you take a naked picture of yourself and send it. Right, via text? You're that's an illegal. asshole. You're an asshole. Well, it's illegal. Yeah, it's it's illegal. Yeah, yeah, it is legal. So you're like porn right. trafficking. Yeah. But I think that the law really needs to catch up with technology. I like what the guy did and all that, but I can see where they're going to say, hey, she wrote this letter thinking it was only going to be between those two. And, you know, that's and that's he what it's, took it. Yeah, I he guess kinda, he must have left her name attached to it somehow. You okay. Because how would anyone know it was her? Only if they knew him. Right, exactly. Right. But exactly, 121,000 yeah. people. Exactly. He's a very you know. popular man. <laughs> well, no. What, well, the, what happens in social media is that somebody retweets it. Then somebody else who follows them sees it, retweets it. Then someone who... Right, but if her name doesn't appear anywhere in the letter, right? that's my point. How would they know it was her? <laughs> no, they wouldn't. I don't, I don't know if they knew it was her. Mm-hmm. But it was still retweeted all that time, and then she still feels like she was offended. Mm-hmm. I was offended, and I have rights. So that's why this all— <laughs> And she's a whore. Well, apparently— <laughs> Well, she, according to that story, she was tre- cheating. I don't know she's, she's a whore. She's, she's a whore. Just, she's she can't see— Well, she might not be a whore, but she could be a slut. And she's also not a very good speller, from what I understand. Right. Yeah, very lackadaisical spelling. That's and, why you got to—don't write it out by hand. Use a text— this way, oh, you that's this... much better. That way, you can instantly <laughs> well, <I'm just laughs> copy saying. and paste. <laughs> the problem is, at least you have spell check. You know what I'm saying? You know, you don't come off as a, such an just yeah. such a moron. I have to say, the handwriting is not usually girls have really girly handwriting. Does she writes like a dude? It's not very girly. Well, I well, let me see. The, I can't see. I'm looking at it. Well, it's... first of all, well, she didn't use any hearts for dotting her eyes, and it she didn't doesn't mean. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at it. It looks 
somewhat. It doesn't look like a dude wrote it. I'll tell you that right now. Well, it's that straight up and down writing, which is weird. Yeah. It doesn't slant to the right. Unless she's a lefty, then it, that would have. It might be. That's what it is. Well, she didn't 100%. write cursive. Everybody, well, kids print today. They yeah, they, no, no one writes cursive yeah. anymore. Yeah, but usually it still slants to the right somewhat. If you're a right-handed. Right. Yeah. Eh, she might be left-handed. I print everything except my signature for the most part. Right. And right. when I write greeting cards, it looks kind of fucked up when you write happy anniversary and you print it in block letters. Yeah. Is that what you do? Oh, you think I send a card. <laughs> That's uh. hysterical. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, you don't send cards? For what? Like a birthday card to somebody? To who? Well, you got kids. Uh, yes. If like, they get a birthday card, it's, you know, it's this person thinks. Listen, up and up until your see mom. What, see what this person wrote? That's how I feel. And up yeah. until, like, your mom passed, where you didn't send her a card? No. Wow, you're a bad son. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're a bastard. I'm a bad son. <laughs> I would call her and talk yeah. to her. Yeah, well, I would do well, that yeah. too. Well, look, but I mean, everyone likes to get a so, card. Like to feel do they really? Do you really like to get a card? Yes, I do. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I saying because I. This is what happens. I go like this. They give me a card. I'm like, thanks. I, I really don't even want to open it. So it's like I just take the thing and throw it right into the trash. Like, it, okay, here you go. Perfect example. Kids give you a card on Father's Day. You open it up. You read it. Oh, thank you very much. Right in the trash. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I don't know how that's being a techno bully, but okay. I have no idea. I just don't understand. So what, so what do you do in lieu of a card? I, nothing. I talk. I go there. I see them. I, you know, we Do talk you send a text? Yes, I do. Sometimes I, yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I do, matter of fact. <laughs> What I'll do is I'll go into... Can't bother with... Oh, shit. Can't bother with that stamp, huh? What the hell just happened? We lost... Half the lights went out. The I, lights went I out in John's room. room. At first, I thought we lost all power, which would have really sucked. <laughs> yeah. how, the, how did you do that? How did that happen? My foot, my ass. Oh, all right. Well, that's all right. What's that? <laughs> Nothing to see here. This episode, the nights the lights went out in John's room. Uh, no. So what I would do on their birthdays is like, I would go in and pull pictures of them when they were little kids and stuff and make like four or five pictures and then put it in like a text and everything and then write something to them. So, you know, I guess I'm not paying for a card, but I'm sending them something that's kind of like a card. Now we're flashing. Hey, you're making a big goddamn, <laughs> making a big goddamn project out of that, aren't you? It's a pain in the ass. They don't really sit. It doesn't really sit well in there. There we go. Ta-da. Lights are back on. Yeah, but I, I just so don't... when we roll the credits, I can be the key grip guy on the right. uh, on the show notes. <laughs> yeah. So key grip. The, the thing for me is that I I don't go buy a card because to me it's just hey this person wrote this kind of sounds what I how I feel here I sign my so name just be, so just because that's why they have greeting cards because not everyone is a good writer well, people are weird about that because right. yeah I usually take in well I have a an app that I can take and put like. Four pictures in there. I usually put four pictures of them. You know, usually when they were very first born and when they were little kids, and <laughs> and then I write something to them, write something to them, and then send it to them, and then I'm sure they they delete it or whatever. I don't right. know, mm-hmm. but it's the same. It's basically the same thing, except I don't have yeah. to go out and buy a card. I don't have to go sit there and look through cards. Which well, you know what I hate good. about cards now? Everything? Hallmark. Well, yeah. Hallmark, they need to start hiring men for cards because- Oh, uh, the old men are bastard section? Yeah. Well, not only the that, but if I, let's say- let's Like say Carmen said. My cousin Carmen said that. He, I, I just want to buy a Mother's Day card that just says, happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to buy, you know, because every card I say, hi, mom, I'm sorry, I was an asshole and all that. I know we don't get along. You know, it's like, what the- is it, what, does every kid on the planet have bad relations with their mother? I just want to – I see where he's coming from because let's say I wanted to buy you a birthday card. Now, there was a comedian that he did a whole routine on this. All a male – all a card has to say from one male to the other is dude with an exclamation point. That's all it needs. Dude. Okay. It just sums everything up. All right, I'll go with you. All right. So the last time I bought my mother's – went out to buy my Mother's Day a card. My mm-hmm. mother a card on Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Of course it was Mother's Day. So I go in there. The place looks a shambles. There's nothing there. Well, well, it's because empty. you foolishly went the day of or the day before. The day of. The <laughs> day of. Deuce wisely goes a month out. I'm sure you do. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know. I used to run a card section in my store. Okay. So anyhow, I get there, and the only thing, the only cards there are in Spanish. So like, what am I going to do? 
So I said, fuck it. So I go and I buy a <laughs> Spanish language card and I write to mom, love John. I put it in the envelope. I give it to her. She never looked at it because she never said anything about it being in Spanish. <laughs> there you okay. go. She yeah. might, yeah, but see it's the, the thought that came. You ever see the things that with moms like OJ's mother would think he's okay. Like, yeah, he murdered those people, but yeah. I still love them. Right. You yeah. know, mo- mothers, there's no love like a mother's right. love. That's They'll true. overlook any sin, any transgression. Yeah. Now, my mother, you know. if, if you didn't give her a card, she'd take it pretty personal. Oh, I sent a joke card once. Oh, time. yeah. 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 Was, she yeah. didn't think it was as funny as I did. I mm-hmm. thought it was a riot. Okay. Uh, okay, so you guys come from a different background than, than me. Mm-hmm. but No, I'd like to get a card. What? Yeah, It's yeah. nice to be thought of. All right. Now let me ask you, riddle me this, Batman. Yes. This this is an issue. Um, we went somewhere a while ago, Diane and I, a long a long time ago, and a gift was given. Right. No thank you card. Still waiting. Okay. Yeah, like that sucks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. do you do do you write the thank you cards? I will now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're so <laughs> you're like right. so funny story. But you know what I mean? Because I don't know. Because I don't know. It's just I don't know. Maybe me and Joe come from the world of Miss Manners, and you don't. I don't know. <laughs> but no, if you went to a birthday, an anniversary, a wedding, or whatever, and a gift was given, generally there's a window of time, like right. You know, like within half a year, you get a thank you card. Well, okay, and we're so, we're still waiting. So for me, if I give a gift, I don't care if I give not, a gift. That doesn't mean for birthdays. I'm, I'm talking. Saying. It's a big event. I mean, it's a big I event. Had a wedding or something wedding, like that. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. All right, I, it's customary. Again, I, it give. is customary mm-hmm. uh, to me. I just it doesn't do anything for me. Okay, so funny story today. Sitting here, my sister calls. I'm in the middle of all that stuff with the computer, and she's telling me, "Oh, we got gunfire." Is that hail? No. Is that gunfire? It sounds like gunfire. Could be fireworks. No, it's fireworks. Yeah, they're, they're okay. firecrackers. Because as we know, John hates cops. They could be coming in here looking. <laughs> well, all right. Now I got to go to the story. When I first moved to this place, right across the street is the police station. And the fire station, too. And right? the damn fire station. And the EMS. And right. The- all, they're all right across the street. <laughs> Very conveniently located. <laughs> so it's, I don't know, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm sitting here. I'm sound asleep. And then all of a sudden... I wake the. F- I'm like, what the fuck was that? And I'm sitting there, and then I hear. I'm like, shit, that's that's gunfire. So now I'm like, what? What am I going to do? So I I think it's from the neighbor's house. Like I think they're over there having a hoot nanny. Right. Or I don't know what's going on. So I look around. I you know it's all dark. I'm walking around in the dark. I'm looking out the windows. I don't see anything. Don't even. I don't see nothing. So I'm sitting there, and I'm. I turn on the radio, and didn't hear anything after that so i put the radio on so i could go back to sleep but i really couldn't go back to sleep and then finally around five o'clock i get up and uh all of a sudden my phone like 5 30 my phone starts going off with all these texts and they go are you okay did you hear anything <laughs> i'm like what the hell and now you wonder what did i miss what did i miss so then i call a friend and they're like yes did you hear the gunshots last night i go you know i did hear gunshots last night they go yeah they shot at the they shot up the police station <laughs> They shot the so, police. You're just like oh, gunshot. Uh, gunfire. I never looked out the front. I never looked out the front <laughs> window. I looked out the side. Who would could think, have been the zombie apocalypse? You go right back to sleep. Who would think that somebody would shoot at the fire? Yeah, I forgot about that story. Yeah, That's a couple that. of years ago. Yeah. I remember that now. They shot right. They shot up the door, the entrance, the police entrance door. Yeah. They shot it all up. And, uh, you know, so then I look out the window the next day and every meet, every news truck yeah. is sitting here with all the things up in the air. And I was like, holy Did cow. Did any one of them want to interview you because you're right across the street? I never went outside. Well, you should, you might get the, hi, this is Joe yeah, I wouldn't even Blow answer. I wouldn't from, even answer yeah, the door. Yeah, just, I would have pretended like I wasn't even home because what am I going to say? Yeah, I was sitting and I was sound asleep <laughs> and I heard. <laughs> you know, like, and it'd be like. They'd be casting aspersions on your character like I just did. Look at this guy. He hears gunshots and goes right back to sleep. Yeah, I just thought it was the crazy neighbors next door that were shooting up the place, you know? <laughs> this happens all the time here. You know, I thought maybe my cousin Jimmy saw someone running out of the property. <laughs> <laughs> Ducking cover. Right. So you never know. Uh, I don't know where we were. We well, were doing... before we went on a tangent, we were talking about thank you cards. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, funny story. <laughs> the third time. Funny. It's not even funny anymore. So my sister calls me, 
And she says to me, hey, get Deuce and Joe's address. I got to send them a thank you card. Mm-hmm. And I almost said, eh, but now I'm going to need your addresses. Okay. <laughs> Because you send very nice flowers to my mom's. I'll text it to you. Yeah, text it to you. So I can <laughs> that that way I can. There we go. <laughs> Can't just write it out in a ballpoint pen. I'll text it to yeah, you. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> that way I know you'll get it. Right. Because so, I know you. What's this piece of paper? Right. right in the trash. <laughs> so then I'll have to send it to my sister so she can uh, yeah, I mean, send you guys. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's like that's one of those things where, like, where you realize that you have a disconnect between people that are. Really, not that much younger than me, right? You know, I, I, again, I, I'm 52. I'm all right, older, but well, go no, ahead. but the person, this event that we went to, they weren't that much younger than I am, yeah. right? So, so I thought that... they would have been caught in the net of Miss Manners. Evidently not. <sighs> Evidently, <laughs> you either. I was like, okay, all right. So the way I look at it, and is... let me clarify: like, if I gave you a birthday gift, yeah. I wouldn't expect a thank you card. Okay. Good thing. Because no, no because, <laughs> well, no. But I'm talking. This is like a huge catered event. You're, All right. you're going to a banquet hall. Right. It's a major deal. Everyone's dressed up. You know, except for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Go ahead. But you know what I'm saying. So and and I'm, you're, you're talking like a substantial. Well, you finish. know, a lot of yeah. times on a big event, you actually just to have the person you're inviting there, you put them through a lot of trouble to be there. Mm-hmm. Well, you're talking a about effort. a wedding and stuff like that. Right. right. Or a I surprise. Understand. It's a 50th wedding anniversary. Something like that. So, something yes, huge. you should thank them for being there. Thank you for And I, I never buy a gift. Mm-hmm. I always write a check. Ah, so you're a stick. Yeah. Oh, send, well, that's a send, gift. Send yeah, that's that's a gift. gift. I, I never just <laughs> show it up like. No, no, you know. of course not. <laughs> Here, <it's, laughs> no, I will, I will write a check or give cash. I never give a give gift you because, a gift. like, they go, yeah, okay, uh, we have a register. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to a store. Yeah, look yeah this I, up, bullshit. I don't think anyone that. even does that no, anymore. Bullshit. That, that was, was pretty that was much played out by the time Diane and I got married. Right. Here, no, I, no. Well, they the did gift. it for babies. It was a big thing with babies. Right. Same it was thing. a baby register for a I while. I give the gift of cash. It never, yeah. It's always the right size. It's always the right thing. It's always, always the right, right color, color, and it always fits. Yeah. Exactly. And you don't have to go to that particular store for them to buy something. Here's cash. You can go anywhere. And I'm, I'm going to be straight out honest with you. I don't expect someone to write me a card, a thank you card, and send it to me. Mm-hmm. I, I, the, the thank you is implied. That's for me. I mean, you, they're, you're that good a friend and stuff like that. The thank you is implied. For me. Did you ever, see, saying, a, did you ever see, like, um, I, I would turn this a gift grab. Okay. Oh, yeah. And what yeah. I mean by a gift grab, there were these people that Diane and I knew. Their son was getting married. Okay, so we kind of loosely know their son. Okay. We do not know the fiance. Diane got an invitation to the bridal shower. I would send it in and say, I can't go. Di- exactly. But Diane doesn't know this girl. I don't know this girl. You know, right. we, we weren't even sure if we were going to so get you, invited to the wedding. So you're saying they sent you the invitation just a to gift, get a gift. A gift grab. Yeah. yeah. See, that would be a mistake on their I, part. Yeah, I get, I get that. What's that? That would be a mistake on their part, sending it to, like, if I don't really know you mm-hmm. or, you know. But see, some people get, like, um, they feel weird, like, like oh, I know, I, I got, you know, I guess that they'll feel embarrassed, like, oh, I guess I, I should, should go. Yeah. You well, know, they do that, yeah. yeah. But it, it was kind of like a passive-aggressive thing. They had, we, she didn't go to the bridal shower. And then what wound up happening was she was a whore, and she got <laughs> she got caught with a, another cock caught in her vagina, and uh, they wound up breaking up and everything. Like just so, about. So like, then, would you get your gift back? Exactly, that would happen then because we would have yeah, right. probably given cash, like you said, yeah, or right. a gift card or something like right. that. So then it's now never... you're now you're sol. Yeah. Again, so it, you know, it's, listen today. I, I don't know. I want every gift given back to me for every marriage that failed. I think that's fair. Well. I yeah, that, there was a there was a court case for that. I I get where you're coming from, but it's just like, yeah, it's like I want a refund. The Jeez. marriage didn't take. I want a refund. Right, now I, I lost half. I lost half my shit. Now I got to go back and give up everybody back their yeah. gifts from the wedding <laughs> but, that well, I paid I mean, for. But but am I out of bounds? Because when I said this to some people a lot I younger mean, than me, they thought I was like terrible. Right, hold on, let me get back to Joe here. Joe, okay. how long does the marriage have to last before you? Why you want a refund? Is it like five years? Ten years. Ten years. So if it's over ten years, oh, it's okay? Yeah, dude, that's like... <laughs> I, over no, ten I, years? No, I, 
now, technically, if, if they're married if one, apart, if they're married if 24 apart, hours, you lost that gift. I understand that part. But if it falls Joe, apart within, Joe feels, say, if Joe it falls fe- apart within five years, five I years, think I'm getting ripped you off. You think you're getting ripped off. You want yeah. your, okay, I good. want my money back. All right. Well, my, mine lasted 13 years, so fuck you. No. You get my money back. <laughs> 60 <laughs> years. <laughs> All right. So, so much for grading your girlfriend's apology letter. She, well, it was an apology letter. And isn't that kind of like a dickish thing? Yeah, that do? is kind of a dick. Like she must apologized. have really, she, he must yeah. really be friggin'. Well, hurt. she apparently, the consciousness that she cheated on herself. Because she's a whore. Police said AT&T employees were working on phone lines when the resident, 64-year-old George Jove, approached them around 11 a.m. Wednesday. The, those employees told the man they would move soon, but that apparently was not good enough for Jove, according to police. They say Jove went back inside and returned with a revolver. <laughs> the AT&T employee's video shows the man circle the trucks, shooting at the tires. <laughs> the hiss of the air can be heard after each bang. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think he quite used one of them. <laughs> There's a guy shooting out my tires. There's a guy shooting out my tires. The employee taking the video can be heard saying. After shooting at the truck's tires, Joe begins firing into the front grill of a truck with the arm and bucket raised above it. Wow. The employee taking the video can be heard. (laughs) Yeah, he had photon torpedoes, I'm sure. The employee taking the video can be heard telling a dispatcher that another worker is still raised above the truck in the bucket. (laughs) <laughs> no injuries were reported in the incident, and police say they are still trying to determine if Jove intended to hit the employees or just the trucks. AT&T released a statement in response to the incident, saying, We're grateful nobody was hurt, and we're working with law enforcement in your investigation. Because there is an active investigation, I need you to refer, refer to them for any questions. Jove was taken into custody by the... High LA police for questioning. I guess I pronounced that right. That's probably highlight. Highlight, yeah. Or Hialeah. <laughs> okay. If you go to the show notes, you can actually see the store. It has the video. And uh, you can see uh, Jorge uh, shoot up a couple trucks. And he's just, matter of factly, just walking around and stops and reloads. Yeah, it looks like he's off his meds. Yeah. Reloads. Like, yeah, yeah, this is a yes. this is a good idea. Right. Let's. You know what? I've had enough of this. It might be one of those dudes. It's like you know they just diagnose him with like some terminal disease. Yeah. said, yeah, the hell with this. I'm going to go. But or imagine, maybe, or maybe uh, he had the right meds. Imagine being in a bucket truck and all of a sudden a guy comes out and starts shooting your truck. Yeah, you up. can't do shit. You're just sitting up there. You're like, what, yeah. what do I do? I'm not coming down. You got to be right. like a rabbit. Like, well, if I sit still, he can't see me. Right. Yeah, maybe. It's just like that. Those trucks were laughing at me. Definitely be going to jail, I would think. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I assure you, he will be. Yeah, that's like assault, reckless endangerment, discharging a firearm. Let me ask you guys a question. <laughs> so you're going for an interview, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the person's going to want to hire you. And the first thing she wants to know is if you're committed to your job, even on a Sunday at 11 a.m. Erica Nardini is the CEO of sports and men's lifestyle site called Barstool Sports. In a recent New York Times interview, she detailed her process for vetting job candidates. After saying she was a horrible interview because of her impatience, she explained a unique process for gauging potential hires interest in the job. It's something I do. If you're in process of interviewing with us, I'll text you about something at 9 p.m. or 11 a.m. on a Sunday just to see how fast you respond. The maximum response time she'll allow is three hours. Now, is that a cunt move or not? Yeah. And yes. if it's a guy, mm-hmm. it would be a dick move. Yeah. Right. So it's not. It's not like we're going to try and say that you know, just because she's a woman, she's not allowed to any boss mm-hmm. that does this. It's a jerk off move. So you can be sitting in church on Sunday, right? Yeah, and she's going to text you, right? And then and you got three hours to respond. Yeah, yeah I mean, what the hell? You're, you know, it just makes no sense. It's not that I'm going to bug you all weekend if you work for me, but I want to know you'll be responsive. 
I think about work all the time. Other people don't have to be working all the time, but I want people who are also always thinking. The policy tracks with some of Nardini's other beliefs about work-life balance. So in other words, if you go to work for somebody, Mm -hmm. you know, you're on all the time. Well, if you're a salary employee, that's usually the case. But I mean, you're like a writer. So basically, I don't know if they're with how they pay over there, but usually writers get paid by the piece, right? I don't know. I don't know enough to know enough either. It sounds to me it might be a salary job. A 2016 survey survey of roughly 5,000 employees by Project Time Off and a market research firm found that millennials were most likely to consider themselves work martyrs or people who rarely take time off from work in pursuit of career advancement. I don't believe this survey. (laughs) (laughs) The survey also found that millennials were most likely to demonstrate pride in their unfailing commitment to their jobs. While only 26 of Gen Xers and 20% of baby boomers wore the work martyr title as a badge of honor, 35% of millennials did. I, that doesn't make any sense to me. No, no it's that this is a, it's, it seems like it's backwards. I, first of all, I no longer trust any kind of statistical survey because I major, I minored in statistics and you can take numbers and make anything you want out of them. Oh, well, you know day. what they say? They say statistics don't lie, but all liars use statistics. Yeah. So basically, and then I'll tell you what, she took a pretty People good People that hit. say that usually lose in debates. Mm. That's their mantra. Right. <laughs> um, also- first of all, how many baby boomers can be possibly left in the workforce? Because I'm the youngest of the baby boomers. Yeah. Well, they're, starting- they're, they're retiring at the rate of 10,000 a day. Right. Right. Anyone born between 46 and 64 is a boomer. See, that's my conspiracy theory right now. Because well, first right of now, all, yeah, they want all the baby boomers to die. They want, every, they want all these baby boomers to die. There's well, too sure. many of you. We got to get rid of you. Yeah. Like uh, Bill Burr said, I think they all want to give you a free cruise. And when that cruise ship gets out in the middle of the ocean, they just strife it and then just blow it up and let it go right to the bottom of the ocean. Fortunately, I don't take cruises. Yeah. Me either. Mm-hmm. You won't get Johnny in one of those. Uh, I don't take Johnny cruises. will still be here. I don't, I, would, I don't see the point of a cruise. I'm, I'm like the better Asian man. What's the point? But, but no, I mean, I, I don't know because the, the, the millennials that I'm familiar with, not have the best work ethic no, in they the have world. No, work no they they, they jump know. from job to job, and yeah, you know, they it's like, hey, listen, you don't like me, fine, I'll find another person right. who loves me. I don't care, I'm going. First hey, of all, the guess very... what? We got a friend sighting. Mm-hmm. Don, Don just showed up. Oh yeah, cool. Hey, Don. I, you know, for me, I just think again, they're going to have to do something. I mean, they're going to run the world, and you figure if there's that many baby boomers are retiring that fast, 10,000 a day, mm-hmm. yeah. then pretty soon, you know, they're going to start, to, I guess the business to be in is the business of uh, funeral homes. Well, geriatric care. care. Health care. There you go. Yeah. One of those things too. Yeah, there's first seven, of all, 78 million of us. First of all, this survey to me is suspect just by its very name, Project Time Off. You know where, <laughs> you know where the first baby boomer was born? No, but I'm sure you do. Philadelphia. The first baby boomer was born in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. To recognize that it was born January the 1st at like 1201, 1946. And that was so it. So it's a woman. She's recognized as the first baby boomer. Wow. Yeah, when she turned 60 or 65 or whatever She's still it was. alive? Yeah. Yeah, she's- How about that? that? She has a boat. And she retired. She's in like Florida or California, somewhere where you can have boats all yeah. the time. Oh, yeah. And the name of her boat is First Boomer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Be known like as the first first boomer. baby boomer. Michael's would be the last one to die. Today, breaking news, the last yeah. baby boomer yeah. died. Like the first recognized. Now, see, when I was <laughs> – see, originally, I was called the buster generation because we were You the all baby break busters. balls. Yeah, and we break balls. You know, ball busters. But now <laughs> we're kind of like lumped in either with the baby boomers or the later busters are lumped in with Generation X. I don't know how that happened, where this all came from, but – but they're between 65 and 70 is considered the baby bus. Yeah, there's a huge dip in uh, births, yeah. mostly because the pill became more accepted. Okay. The birth control pill. That's, yeah, that that's, what, that's what they it. think it is. That's, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's probably why everything dropped off. You know, it's now it's not just you don't pull out and pray. Mm-hmm. Now there's a way of not, you know, stopping it. So that's a good thing. You know, you don't have to have like seven kids well and birth kids. control not necessarily the pill i mean birth control became uh there was a supreme court case in 68 because some of the southern states it was illegal to sell contraceptives what yeah it was a uh, it went to the supreme court and you weren't allowed to buy some su- some of the southern states yeah well, in the country part you, of that you couldn't be, you yeah couldn't contraception buy. is a sin thing listen no seed shall be spilt it's all got to be sent right into that cum dumpster it must stay there 
By the way, I'm looking at this woman who, uh, and she says, it's really great to feel uncomfortable, she said, and you change so much as a person from that. You could tell she's young because after about 30 years on the job, that whole, you know, that whole- You think whole, she's young? Well, she doesn't look young, young, but she's- Don't about that petra, man. It's like she's been loading trucks all of her fucking life because she's pretty rough. I mean, well, she, yeah, she's not an attractive woman. Looks okay, like she'll but, kick your ass. But no. she's not, she looks she's, like she's about 35 or so. Oh, she's in her 40s. You think so? Oh, yeah, she's definitely- Yeah, she had a tough paper route if she's- Really? You think she's that bad looking? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't like that. Maybe if she smiled- Yeah, she has kind of like a bitch face going. And uh, Looks like she'd like kick in the genitals while wearing ice skates. But look, (laughs) look, everybody- I'm not saying she wouldn't do that. I've been in manufacturing for 30 years, and all those guys I knew when we were young, and they were all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and hey, I got this work ethic, and I'm moving up and everything. You know where they are now? They're beating in the They're all stressed out. Yeah, whatever. What the fuck? You know, it's it. it after a while, you, it just gets to you. You're you know, just trying you say, to get through the day. Come on, mm-hmm. just trying to get. Everybody through. gets old. Doug from uh, Who's Right showed up. Hey, Doug, what's up? Ah, he took you. They took you to task over Android and Apple. I was listening. And I enjoyed that very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know. it's not, what? Yeah, hey. it's not wow. often when you see Job you can is quiet like. <laughs> they, they like, man, they, they rope it doped you right in and everything. I was just like, well, I this, don't know about this is that. Great. This Techno is, bully. Yeah. Defeated. Yeah. They, uh, uh, they're uh, Anthony. Uh, I think Anthony is a, is a, is a big Android guy. Oh my really? God. Is yeah. he? Yeah. So, yeah. Boy, he pummeled you. I'll tell you what, the whole time I was thinking he was sitting there with a, bo- a bottle of lotion running off a hand batch of baby batter yeah. while I was talking about Android <laughs> phones. To be honest with you. He beat you like a redheaded stepchild. Not really? I just let him ramble. ramble oh, shit. The old now, what am I supposed to do? Bit. I'm going to sit there. I mean, again, well, you do just... what I do. You say I'm done and you get, you go quiet. No, I did just, I let him ramble <laughs> about what he did. And I'm like, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. We, yeah. you know. I, you I, you have one. I found it was very chucklicious. <laughs> I'm glad you were. I'm glad you were entertained. That's good. Also, uh, don't look for part two because the, what my understanding is that in the middle of the interview, Doug's computer crashed. Yeah, and then I remember when he, they were trying to reboot back up. Okay, so when he came back, he had this problem with his computer. We couldn't hear him, and I thought it was his internet connection. Mm-hmm. And usually, when you use Cast, it doesn't matter because it it, com- it comes from his side of the computer, right? And you don't have that. So it's just you and Anthony and no Doug? Well, apparently that whatever noise that was, you know, whatever issue he was having was in the recording. Okay. So it's, I don't even know if there's going to be a part two. It's probably your Apple. Right. I don't know if he's still here. Hey, hey, Doug, if you're still here, is there going to be a part two? got to wait 30 seconds yeah. for him to hear it. Mm. But uh, no, it was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. There was a lot of sitting around, a lot of uncomfortableness. But in, in between the uncomfortableness, we had a, we had a pretty good time. <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be a part two. It's a shame because the part two is pretty good, too. <laughs> Man uses fireworks to remove bee nests from garage, promptly burns down garage. Yay! I, I don't know. So Were his neighbors cheering? <laughs> Oh boy. Some genius thought that this would be a great idea. <laughs> Is that a car alarm going off in the background? <laughs> it's fire. Uh, oh, you, you mean I, th- I thought the bug the bug sound was the... Yeah, one of the sound effects sounded like it was like a it's car, a car alarm, alarm going, going off. Back and... Gotcha. I don't well, know if it was across the street again or not. <laughs> a Michigan man decided to use fireworks to try to desor destroy a bee's nest in his garage on Monday, but ended up burning the structure to the ground. The resident used a smoke bomb oh, to try to remove the bees from the hive in his garage. Fortunately, no one was injured in the fire. The bees uh, were, I would imagine, right? Uh, probably. The homeowner, was, the homeowner told the news outlet that it was depressing to lose the building, but everybody is safe, and that's the main thing. Fireworks are known as a safety hazard to both health and property. An anticipation from the impending 4th of July celebration, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission posted a video on YouTube last week that uses mannequins to show the kind of damage that fireworks can inflict when mishandling. Uh, now, usually with alcohol. We used to do this thing where we would light a firecracker and then wait for it to, to think. Halfway and we, down. And then uh, yeah. we would throw it at somebody. 
right. then it would like blow up like in, in their face or well in their hand and, and, much, and much hilarity would ensue yeah. <laughs> yeah. right yeah. now these are firecrackers right. these weren't and or, or anything yeah, quarter like quarter sticks yeah, <laughs> yeah our good friend chris who frequents our uh he, he did that he blew, blew up in his uh, hand a little firecracker All right i'll never forget the time that one got one kid he lit it and he let it sit there and burn and he went to throw it <laughs> He went the cock back and throw it. No. He got it back about where his ear was, and it went off. Yeah, his... you got to start here. <laughs> yeah. and... Right. So it went off, and he's like, short fuse, short fuse. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, so, I, again, poor guy. Uh, burns down. What do you do? Do you, like, this? Um, I'll tell you one thing. He's probably shit out of luck with his insurance you company. Think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't. Well, here's a story that I know, a, a person that I know. They were getting ready to go to work and everything. They both work. The kids, they get the kids off to school and everything. And she was, she took a, I guess she had a, something on. She was cooking for breakfast or whatever. And instead of mm-hmm. turning it off, she turned it all the way to simmer. Okay. All right. And then she was making something and she had a wooden chopping block or whatever. And then she put that on the stove and she just, and they all ran out of the house. The chopping block caught on fire, burnt the whole house down mm-hmm. to the ground, yeah. to the foundation. So they go in and they... Look at everything, mm-hmm. and they realize that the stove was, was the source of the was fire. The source of the fire. So they said to the woman, "Did you leave the stove on?" And she went, "Oh my God, I've just burnt down the house. I, I must have. I must have left it in the other position." When she admitted that, that was it. No, it was not. Oh, yeah. They got full. But if she would have tried to say that she didn't, mm-hmm. then that would have been insurance fraud, oh. and she would have been in trouble. Acts of, I think some acts of stupidity. Yeah, but I think fireworks yeah, are above fireworks and beyond are, yeah, I, stupidity. Yeah, that's like. Well, I'm going to try to get out of paying anyway. Yeah, but yeah, when you get, do. yeah, but when you have, you say, yeah, I had fireworks and I launched them at a bee's nest. <laughs> <laughs> now, how would you take yeah. out a bee's nest? Oh, geez. Uh... I would just go in there and hit it with bugs. Yeah, know, bugs go out at, well, like, what you do is you go out at night. That's what bees Genghis, won't fly yeah. out at night. That's Genghis, what we used to that's do. That's what Genghis did. Ah, I go out at nighttime. They can't see shit. You, you, yeah, Genghis they, would attack like a vampire. Won't, they won't fly at night. They'll stay in there. If you if you keep it dark and like just go out there with a flashlight. If you turn on the, the light on your yeah, house. Yeah, you turn the lights on. I assure you they will find you. But if it's total darkness, yeah. that's when you go out and get them. Get when them. I was about 10 years old. Uh, we lived in an old house, mm-hmm. old wooden siding and all, and it had a, a colony of bees. Colony, uh, carpenter bees? No, honeybees. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah, that's bad I mean, bees. it was, and and my whole wall would hum. Mm-hmm. That's how many were in there. Yeah. So my dad says, "Well, that'd be very soothing at night when you let this in." <laughs> yeah. So my dad says, "Okay, we got. I got to get up there and get them out of there." So he takes and puts on his big heavy hunting clothes and park it, and he's got these big gloves on. And he takes a big, long extension cord, and he's got a vacuum cleaner, like the canister one with the mm-hmm. hose. Like a shop vac? Yeah, like a shop vac. So he goes walking up the ladder, and he's got like a bee's net around his bee face. Beekeeper's net. Thing. Yeah, so he gets up the top there. And, oh, and he's got, he's got waders on. So he's got waders so they can't sting him. So he's up there, and he takes the vacuum cleaner, and he's got it on, and he puts it right in a hole. So it's like uh, it's sucking them. All the bees are sucking out into this thing, right? Well, a couple bees are out already so they're trying to come home and they see this so they attack the vacuum cleaner and they're kind of attacking him but he hasn't get stung yet so they're like they're they attack the hose and they walk to the end and they like look around and they, they get sucked in <laughs> well he's up there for about i don't know 15 or 20 minutes just having his way with these bees and then like three of them got down in his boot and right. started stinging the shit out of him so here he comes he comes hopping down <laughs> he comes <laughs> hopping down the thing with his boot like hopping around trying to get the boot off so he can get the bee out of his boot so that didn't work because there were still tons of bees and now they're all pissed off now they're all flying around they, they want a piece of somebody a cloud of bees <laughs> right so they're all, they're all out running around we can't go outside i'm upstairs i'm upstairs at my window and i'm looking out the window and they're all just attacking the, yeah there is a car alarm in there how about that yeah. so they're uh they're attacking the window like they keep banging off the wind and stuff like that so we a uh, call so they called a beekeeper in he came in with a bunch of smoke yeah. And went up there and smoked everything down. And then he went, he pulled the board off. And then I guess he got the queen bee or something or yeah. like that. And he took the bees out of there. So then they leave. The combs themselves were, and I'm not lying, they were like 
five foot long. Oh, yeah, they weigh, yeah, they weigh a lot, and they're yeah. packed with honey. They packed a lot of honey out of there, man. Right, but, but what happened was my dad, of course, he sprayed poison in there at first. Uh, yeah. So he ruined all Poisonous the honey. Poisonous honey. Poisoned all the honey. So you could have lost Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> We need the poo. But you know, we don't you don't have anything like that nowadays. Like there was always every spring we had like one swarm mm-hmm. that would someone a swarm would hit the a tree or something. Yeah, right. And it'd be and all a lot of houses there. are better sealed now because everyone's got vinyl or aluminum siding. You you when you said you had the wooden siding, I was like, yeah. first of all, you're gonna get carpenter bees. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, we'll there's, there's, there's green and well, they black fuzzy. Yeah, we used to huge giant. Bees. We used to have a badminton net for them. They'd be flying. Oh, I got one in my house. That's what I do. I you hit just bees. Walk out and yeah. whack they one don't of them. Sting you? They're pretty harmless. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't do it now. But yeah. back then, we used they to ram you. They get pissed off. They just <laughs> they just they bounce off you, but yeah. they don't sting you. But I did step on one one time, and he did sting me. So mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. Anyway. they they do sting, but they'll sting other. They're not insects. aggressive. Generally, is what it is. Yeah, I think if I saw a, a nest like that, yellow like, jackets, those fuckers. Oh, yeah, they're, they're not, just pricks, yeah. them right. guys. They, they Especially don't... in October when they know they're about to die. <laughs> you know, they're going to they're gonna take somebody with them. Yeah, just you should have seen my alien ear uh, episode. I got stung in the ear uh, when and you got cauliflower ear. Yeah. Oh yeah, at the swing that we were talking about earlier. You look like uh, <laughs> my ear. Lo- it looked. It was just you know. You look like John Merrick. <laughs> It was weird. I don't know who that is. The elephant man. The elephant man. Yeah, and if you went like this, (laughs) if you like kind of flung your ear, it would go like a diving board. It was really weird. (laughs) It was weird. A prominent Perth businessman holidaying in Thailand has fallen to his death while parasailing in waters off the resort island of Phuket, but most people will say, fuck it. Fuck it, yeah, that's yeah. what it looks so, like. Fuck it. So, with his wife reportedly filming the fatal fall, Thai media reporter Roger John. Oh, uh, there's a the shitty show. Thai media reports Roger John Hussey, 71, plunged more than 30 meters into the sea after his harness apparently failed shortly after lifting off from the Kata or Keita Beach, 860 kilometers south from Bangkok on Wednesday. The video posted on Facebook and reportedly filmed by his wife shows Mr. Hussey uh, on onshore smiling as he is strapped in the safety gear. Mr. Hussey, deputy chairman of WA Land Agency Landgate, and another man who is not wearing a harness, are then pulled by boat, their parachute lifting them into the air above the water. About 13 seconds into the flight, Hussey is seen falling from the air into the sea. Beachgoers rushed to help the Australian, who was reportedly having difficulty breathing after he was pulled from the sea. So he was still alive when he hit. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that was a hell of a fall. I mean, yeah, if you see the video, it's feet. like, yeah, I would have probably died halfway down of heart well, failure. I'll put the story. There'll be a link to the story in the show notes if you want to go see the video. But that's, that's really horrible. It's amazing. Man. Now, here's the thing, and I've never seen this happen before because I watched the video. They I, put the guy in a harness. Mm-hmm. Then there's like three or two or three guys strapping him in right and you know he's got a harness on he's got the four the five point harness right they they clip him into the parachute they're holding it so he goes to run and the parachute fills with air it lifts him off the one guy stays behind him mm-hmm. and holds on to it and and goes up in the air with him and then puts his legs through and he's flying up there with him now the video's too far away you're too far away to see what it is but there's like some kind of shenanigans going on there next thing you know you see a body fall when I first saw it, I thought the worker fell. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Because he had no harness yeah, he on. Was, he he wasn't clipped in or anything. Yeah. He survived. Yeah, he was the still in the shoot. The guy in the harness fell. Yeah. So to me, I'm looking at the wife. Because I'm telling you right now, I have a feeling she had him off. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was weird. I didn't, How do you fall? I've never seen any. In. I've never done parasung. I've never seen it done mm. close up where they do the actual. Str- I mean, I've seen people like, hey, you know, it looks kind of well, cool. But I mean, if you ever go. But I never knew they had the guy like on your back. There's, I mean, the guy was throwing his like he was sitting on his shoulders. He was doing like. he was like a monkey. He he, he kind of climbed on the guy's back. And he, he like held on to the, up he held he gets- onto the back of the parachute. And it went. He went up in the air. He he swung his legs up and put it through like you would like you're, like you're on a tree like you're doing on a tree. Yeah. And he put his legs through there. So I don't know if that's up. yeah. I don't know if that's the normal so now, way. Or... No, I've never seen I've that never happen seen before. It done like Have you that. ever I've seen parasailing done? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I haven't. So I don't know. I've seen it where you went up by yourself. There was no other guy with you. No. I guess that guy steered the parachute. He. Yeah. I'm telling you, Deuce. There's no way that guy should have been on the back of that parachute. 
Yeah. And then they're up there, and all of a sudden there was like some kind of fight, and next thing you know, you see a body drop. And I swear, I thought it was the worker. I thought yeah, the worker. He was fell. hanging there for about yeah, you seen him hanging three so, or four seconds for some, before he finally plunged. But here's the thing: when you go, basically, what if you ever had to strap in for for work in a fall hazard? You got to mm-hmm. put on that harness. It's a yeah. five point harness. They got them where I work. Through your legs, through your arms, you and you got to be certified to put those on right. or so, wear them. Right. So now, so now they put these two clips. Put these two D clips. Yeah, they're just carbiners, is all they were. Right. So then you hook them onto this thing, big D rings, and then up you go. How this guy fell out of that? I wonder if is those beyond me. if those uh, carbiners were rated for the the right amount of weight because they sell them. I can buy them. Like you can get those carbiners, this but they'll, they'll on, tell you right on there not to exceed a hundred pounds. But these things, I'm telling you, there's no way that he should have fell. No way. I don't think so. And I'm looking right now. At somebody paid somebody to have this guy fall. He died in the hospital. Right. They got him up to, to a certain height before he could get out in the water too far, and they dropped him. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be an investigation. Do you think so? In a place like this? I mean, basically, the, it's not yeah, like it's right. in America. It's not like America where you're going to yeah. have a team of lawyers showing right. up. And- no, I mean, you know, some, that somebody was paid off. This guy was worth a lot of money. Yeah. And he was in pretty good health, he looked like. He was yeah. you know, a pretty vital 70, guy. Yeah. 71 years old? This to me stinks to high hell. This whole thing, and if you like, I said, go to the show notes. There'll be a link to this article. Wow, this place sounds like you don't want to go to Phuket. Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade data lists Thailand as one of the most dangerous destinations for Australian visitors. Over three hundred and twenty Australians were injured or died in Thailand in two thousand sixteen, mm. ahead of the Philippines and Indonesia. You know what I say to Phuket? Fuck okay. it. Wild monkeys roaming Florida, well, and they're <laughs> like, breeding like like thugs, like monkeys, <laughs> and they're breeding like monkeys. They got colors on, <laughs> bloods and crips. <laughs> uh, bands of feral monkeys are roaming Central Florida, scaring families with their aggressive behavior, making homes in suburban backyards, and puzzling wildlife officials who struggle to curb their growing networks of numbers. Well, listen, they're humping like monkeys. How do they yeah. get there? Apparently, some a probably people brought them over, brought them oh, over, let them loose, monkeys. or they got out. I'm sure the Burmese pythons will do a good number on some of the monkeys, but uh, well, now you've got them, and next thing you know, they're swallowing dogs and cats and little kids. Yeah, yeah. they well, got a big issue there. with that in Florida. Yeah, they got yeah. a problem with that. Right. Hey, you want to hear a wild story? You you posted that snake, not to Did interrupt, you? but you posted that snake picture eating that deer or whatever yeah. it was. And it's funny because last week. We were talking about it. Somebody that I work with knows someone that has a big giant python or boa constrictor, and they would like hang with it all the time, like watch TV on the couch with it, draped all over the place, sleep with it in the bed and everything. So they woke up in the middle of the night because they were cold and like all the blankets were like knocked off and the snake was stretched out like straight as a board, like Straight as a board, like I got it. Straight okay. as a board, I got it. And you know, the snake never did that before, so she just kind of like casually mentioned it to someone. And it's like, yeah, the weirdest thing happened. The snake was in bed with me, straight as a board. And they said, you want to get rid of that snake because the snake is measuring you up to see if it can swallow you. <gasps> <laughs> get yeah. the fuck out of yeah. here! So this is like a nine foot boa constrictor right, or python yeah. or something. Yeah. I don't know what the hell it is. So. Yeah, they don't sleep with the snake no more. Uh, Do you imagine that? You're like, gee, I'm cool. Yeah, well, what first of all, I hate, that snake doing? I hate fucking snakes. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. kind of partial to mammals myself. But yeah, they're warm, well, they're fuzzy, you tell you they're cute. <laughs> I'd make that snake into snake chops. <laughs> Go ahead, you want to measure me up? Let me show you something. I'll measure you up. And it's not like he could, like, the snake could eat them. But it would constrict you constrict and you would, you would die, yeah. you know, right. and then you're going to you know. might attempt well, did you, I mean, if, okay, uh, if you go to the Brand X Facebook page, mm-hmm. which if you're not, if you're listening and you're not a, have not went over and liked the page, shame on you. But wow. we drop stories and say, yeah, shame on you. Because, you know, we drop little stories in there. If you go over there, there's a story of where these guys got a, a <laughs> 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 there's a deer that's dead and this big giant snake swallows this thing like. Yeah. Oh, like it goes right down. Right, yeah, wow. Like nothing. Deer look like they've, they're they designed to be eaten by it, snakes. I, I agree with you. <laughs> so go over to the Facebook page. You just go to facebook.com slash Brand X podcast. 
and just give us a like. We and had a we bunch had of a, stories over there. When I worked at OPEX, we had this, like, he had a good old boy working there, and we were talking about boa constrictors and people who have them as pets. And he had a neighbor where the thing wrapped himself around the daughter's arm, and they couldn't get it off, and it was squ- and her arm was going numb and everything. That's how hard it was squeezing. We're like, oh, wow. I said, we could, they couldn't do anything to get the snake off, but I took care of that. So we're Oh, I just went in the house, got the blowtorch, put it right in his face. <laughs> he let right go in that like, Man, if nothing, actually, like, nothing motivates like, like fire. fire. Yeah. <laughs> but then, and then somebody was like, actually, piss off. Oh, you kill, you kill, you burn the snake. I was like, well, what do you want me to do? He's like, you burnt the snake. Just the way he said, I just went in the house, got the blowtorch, that snake yeah, let go. That, that situation. <laughs> Better believe it. Yeah, nothing like a nice blue flame jetting out <laughs> in your face. Hey. Mm-hmm. I bet you'd straighten that snake right out. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. Let's, let's get back to the monkeys. Yeah. Monkeys. So the latest uh, thing is going on. So now people are going places and all of a sudden these monkeys are like attacking. And Oh, I would attack them. Oh. Yeah. So what are you supposed to do? And here's Kill the other them. thing. Yeah. Why not? Hunt them down. I mean, you, you know, you're, they're running around and they look like they're aggressive. Yeah. There's yeah. one. Go to my human's rule. Well, right. it sounds like they escaped from a zoo. It says native throughout Asia, the six rhesus macaw monkeys were brought in the Silver macaques. Spring State Park. Mm-hmm. Ma- macaws, aren't they? Macaques. No, macaques. Whatever. Macaques. Monkeys. Then, then, Just say monkeys. Effing monkeys. Then Fuck privately monkeys. owned in the mid-30s as a way to draw tourists. An additional six monkeys were introduced around 1948. How old are these fucking monkeys? Well, they're breeding <laughs> like monkeys. Okay. The rhesus monkeys were put on an island in the Silver R- River, but quickly swam to the surrounding forest, spreading through wooded corridors into nearby neighborhoods. Well, it just sounds like to me you got to like open up monkey season. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the what they're doing out. with all the uh, the aforementioned snakes down there. Yeah, right. rid of them. Guys, there's yeah. wild monkeys out here in Florida. Look at the monkeys. <laughs> now these people are just sitting there. Now, don't they? Didn't they see the story where the monkey ripped the face off of a lady? Guys, this is Florida. There are like no monkeys in Florida. There well, are now. There are now, kid. Yeah. Theme park. Yeah. Guys, this is crazy. So now there's they're sitting there's like a path. So the only person that has no, common is sense insane. is this kid. Yeah, this kid's the only one. That's <laughs> well, he's filming it and he's walking towards the monkeys. So they're like they're, they're like oh look how cute the oh, monkeys. Oh, there's baby ones, baby oh, ones. Uh oh, oh get them oh, quick! God, there's like a whole family. <laughs> Feed them to the snakes. Right yeah. now, now, look, there's I'm looking at seven of them running. Run, there's like nine monkeys. A few minutes later, mm-hmm. guys, the monkeys are attacking! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, guys, the monkeys are attacking us! Oh uh, well, you just attack right back. Oh my god. Guys, we just got attacked by monkeys. And the kid's still filming. Oh! Run, run. And the father's, like, not paying any attention. Run! Listen to these things. Run behind you! <laughs> Sounds like it's time to arm up with oh, yeah. blow torches. <laughs> blow torches, everything. Axes. Oh, right. shit. That's what I would Pitchforks? do. Pitchforks? Oh, yeah. Break <laughs> shovels. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here comes the Jimmy. This is the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. Here comes the Jimmy. He's coming to the rescue. Uh oh. I mean, these monkeys are like, they don't even. They're jackhammering him? (laughs) They're jackhammering the monkeys? Hey guys, we just got attacked by monkeys. Yeah, the kid's like, oh look, we got attacked by monkeys. We got attacked by monkeys. <laughs> we just got attacked by monkeys. Oh my god. Oh. oh. How did this Hold on. We just got attacked by monkeys, guys. We're gonna chainsaw the monkeys. Okay. I haven't heard of wild monkeys in so long, and they're just attacking us like mad. It's like no big deal. <laughs> Yes, we shoot photon torpedoes at the monkeys. So uh, maximum yield. What's going to happen is somebody's going to get attacked. Somebody's going to get killed by these monkeys, and yeah. then you know, then we're going to have an issue. Yeah, but well, someone's going to have to go in there and do something about. Well, first these of all, the monkeys don't belong here. They need to be eradicated. Hmm. Again, it's like the feral hogs that you know those yeah. wild boars that are all over Florida. Yeah, and, 
in Louisiana and Texas. Uh, you know what I say about they're them? They're like in uh, 40 states. Yeah, yeah you, you, you can't get rid of them. There's, there are too many of them. You can't eradicate oh, them. Oh, they can. It's just, They've oh, been they trying. Can. Listen. Yeah. They oh, got a they, bunch. Make, they make delicious. Well, some uh, states stand in the way of the um, culling of them. Well, I saw not those, not those fun other. loving states like Texas. They'll show you how to get rid of them. Well, but you the just go over so there big. and just uh, type in YouTube, type in boar hunting, mm-hmm. okay, and helicopter boar hunting. Yeah. And what they do is they go up in a helicopter and track them through the weeds and everything. Yeah. Take them yeah. out. And that's, uh, yeah, that's what they got to do. So they're up in the helicopter. Exactly. It's just, you know, they're running through. And uh, Ted Nugent was there. And they're hanging out the helicopter. Like they've got. <laughs> Ted Nugent, and apparently the guy's a very good shot. So oh, yeah, Ted Nugent. They're running, and all of a sudden it's like, and they're dropping these things, and they're not even, like, they're like, go, all right, we'll go get them later. And now the flies are flying around. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, yeah, once yeah. they start to get, you can't get rid of them. Well, any invasive species, and they're upsetting the whole natural balance of what we're supposed to have the here. ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. So... To me, any any animal rights activist that gets in the way of this, they should be shot with the monkeys because wow. they're actually <laughs> well, they're actually they're actually uh, uh, an accomplice. This poor guy, he just got a job. Next thing you know, he's he's being dragged out kicking. I'm and sorry, he's getting shot I'm with sorry. the monkeys. I'm sorry, you support the monkeys, so therefore. <laughs> So, well, no, I mean, to me, you're an accomplice to a complete disruption of our ecosystem. He's an enabler. Yeah, yeah he's an enabler of uh, invasive monkeys. Okay. <laughs> Poor guys out there. I remember the time with the, the traffic signal. And my, you know, someone got the bright idea of like, you know, you come to an intersection and every other light you get oh, the green I hate arrow. That shit. Yeah. Every so it'll be like green. the green arrow, but then if you miss that, you got to sit through a whole other sequence of lights before you get the green arrow again. So we were over at my aunt and uncle's, and he's like, yeah, I need to get the guy to figure out that and kill him. <laughs> and my, That's uncle, a bunch of- my uncle Mike is like, kill him? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, sure. Poor guy's just an engineer. <laughs> he thinks he's still in the right. That's the stupidest friggin' idea I ever heard of. Why would you, why do you want to increase <laughs> grabbed out of his office. Come here, you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> nice. Right idea. The guy install martial law because the guy put up a green arrow. <laughs> we don't like your green arrow idea. It's every other green arrow. Who don't? Why would you even do that? Why is that a thought? We find head? this invention unacceptable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is your it's seventh. Inefficient. I, I like traffic efficiency. I'm sorry. I agree. I'm, I'm with you. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Hey, listen, uh, we are on the Radio Vegas Rocks. We are 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific in the morning. And then on Thursdays, we are 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And also Slings, Flings, and Dingalings, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Go listen to us over there if you like. And we're also part of the Hush Your Face Network. And uh, we're very happy to be part of those three networks. And uh, they've some, got some very good shows, so go check them out. All right, ready to do some shout outs? Yeah, why not? Sure. Okay. If you are looking for some other great podcasts to check out, we highly recommend these podcasts. They're fabulous people, they do great work, and they're very, very funny. And we start off with Three is Comedy with Jason, Bob, and Mindy, part of the Hush Your Face Network. And uh, as we record this, happy anniversary to Jason and Mindy. It is their wedding anniversary today. Also, Bad Cop, Bad Cop with Jerry and Dave. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they, I just listened to their latest episode. 88? Yes. It's hysterical. Those two guys, they, they crack me up. Uh, the stuff that they go through, the stories that they find, just an amazing show. If you like this show, you're definitely going to like, like the show. I like Dave's reaction to the Dear Jerry story. Like, every chance he gets. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I didn't have time because of all the nonsense. Oh, you didn't hear that? No, no, I heard the oh, show. Oh, okay. But uh, you know how on the show they have me saying, I fucked a few goats, but I wouldn't never have a gerbil, a gerbil up my, my ass. I, never, um, I wouldn't suck a gerbil up my ass. Well, they ha- you know, they have me saying that, so mm-hmm. they say it. And, I, and you know, I, I, listen, that's fine. I have no problem with it. As a matter of fact, I think it's a story. <laughs> You're a well-known go fucker. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But today I heard Dave say, I could just go in there and fuck my dog. Well, don't you don't if I didn't have if I had some time, I would have had that today. He says, I could take one of my dogs and use it as a condom and fuck another dog. 
I can't wait to get those drops. Can't wait. With Jeez. bated breath. Yes. Oh. Can't wait to use those out of context. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Uh, who's right with Doug and Anthony? Also part of the Husher Face Network. Yeah, the, we didn't hear anything from Doug. I don't know whether the uh, whether he's going to be able to use the second part of that interview. He hates you. He does hate. Mm -hmm. He does say <laughs> <laughs> the pet. I was trying to get more of a rise out of the hate thing. <laughs> uh, the Pet and Miller Show with Matt Miller and Viva La Pedros. Also part of the Husher Face podcast. I feel a little bad. I I go on their show and they take a week off. Uh, no show from them this week. I yeah, don't know that's what right. I would have dropped yesterday. Yeah, I don't know what I did. Yeah, they, they drop on Thursdays. The Bold and Belligerent Podcast with Lauren, Josh, Mike, and Luke. And, uh, well, I don't think Luke's listening to this, so I won't know whether we did a good job or not. See, we are like monkeys, Luke and I. Basically, all we do is throw shit at each other. <laughs> Just like to throw shit. That's your thing. That's our thing. That's Luke and I have a thing. We got a <laughs> thing. We like to throw shit at each other. Mr. Mr. Luke. <laughs> Mr. Luke, Mr. Luke, Mr. Luke, Mr. Luke Johnson. Who did that song? I forget. Unwritable Rant with Juliet Miranda. And also, we're allowed to say Dave Miranda now. Oh, okay. So Juliet and Dave Miranda. Well, you got dispensation? I got dispensation. Oh, look at you. Uh, the Rob and Slim Show with Rob, Sli Rob and Slim and Slambo and Amanda, also part of the Hush Your Face Network. So I got a little story about this. So anyhow, about 11 o'clock last night, Rob sends me a, a, a message. He says, hey, what happened to your text? Uh, it says it's not there anymore. Well, when I put the link to our show in the text, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Either I copied it wrong or something. I don't know whatever happened to it. So what I did was I deleted that tweet and I made another one, looked exactly the same, but with the right link into it. Okay. Well, Rob had pinned it to his Twitter so that people would see it and go and listen to our show. Very nice thing that Rob would do. So I said, oh yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I, uh, I had to delete that and do another. He says, no problem. So he takes and pins the new one on his thing. So I'm sitting there, and about a minute later, I get an email. My phone rings with an email. So I look over, and hello? it says, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's from Rob. And Rob is, he's, you know, the company, that, the, the editing company that I work with, the message is, do you guys sponsor podcasts? And I type back, why, yes, we do. We sponsor the Brand X podcast. <laughs> And all of a sudden, two seconds later, John, is that you? <laughs> yeah, so it was me. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, he's looking for a sponsorship. And then I hooked him up with my friend Jessica Kupferman. And she has a, uh agency where she gets sponsorships for podcasts. Mm. So hopefully they can work out something over there. But um, Sweet. They're on hiatus, which yeah, sucks. Yeah, they had to say, yeah. They're, they're About summertime, people are taking I off. I hear you. Hey, speaking of that, I will be on Friday the 24th. I'm going away on vacation. July? August. August. 24th. Just giving you the heads up. Okay. So, not a problem. Do you want to tape Thursday or cross that bridge or just we'll, take the week we'll, off? Once we get closer to it, we'll see what goes on. Because right. you know me, it's, that's too far out for me even to put on my radar. <laughs> I could be dead by then. All right. Where are wow. We? God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I left off with Rob and Slim, so now it's your turn, John. Ice in the face with Sarah and Rick. Horribly awkward with Sean Fuller, also part of the Husher Face Network. Now that I'm older with Shane and Kenny, a.k.a. Kenny Escobar, a.k.a. <laughs> <laughs> he's, AKA. Got, he's got a million of them. They did a monkey story, too. Yeah. The, yeah, I think uh, one, but... Kenny can defeat monkeys with a sword. <laughs> is what it was. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Yeah. Shane thought he could. Shane, yeah. Thought he could defeat monkeys with a sword. <laughs> with, with just a sword? And Kenny's like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, he was talking about apes. And that's no. and then oh okay now well that chimpanzees yeah. Yeah. they're nah, pretty strong yeah. chimps you don't yeah. yeah well like I say they they were given that one chimpanzee I didn't even know Kenny was like so fascinated by that story of the chimpanzee where he ripped the face off the lady like the really lady, dug yeah. in that happened yeah. in New Jersey yeah it's Connecticut yeah. was it yeah Connecticut uh, New Somewhere Jersey was the tiger too. woman the tiger yeah. yeah so what happened was that the got out of the cage and then this lady came in and she's like takes the toys hold it in front of the face and everything well they were given this chimpanzee because he was getting aggressive they were giving it xanax so this <laughs> chill him out this chimpanzee was probably raging on xanax or whatever needed something needed a fix or something and <laughs> he jumped in and ripped her face and eyes out and oh, everything yeah, like that it. so god love it I, yeah. my, my favorite is the japanese guy who jumped into the orangutan pit and tried to attack yeah, an orangutan with jujitsu yeah. <laughs> like, 
didn't he's, work. Didn't suffered, well. a, no. suffered a broken arm, a broken jaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's it. Let me let me go fuck with that orangutan yeah. because orangutans are pretty mellow, laid back. Let me put an ass kicking on. Yeah, this poor orangutan. Much like the engineer in his office that gets dragged out to be shot, <laughs> he's just sitting in there chilling out, minding his business, eating fruit, and some Japanese guy leaps <laughs> in the pen with him and starts fucking with him. It's just, <laughs> what the hell? Got him off. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're sitting in there, and the next thing you know. <laughs> okay. This Who's is turning? you, John. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, you got to make those monkey sounds with the monkey beating the shit out of the guy. Okay. There okay. we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, all right. Let's... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the feeding continues. Toe on a trigger with Daniel, Nicole, and Courtney 3000. The story behind with Emily Prokop. The Nerdwells podcast with Eric, Sam, and Chris, part of the Hush Your Face Network. Okay. Now, I have to take a, a second here. One. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I got to go into messages because one of the nice things about our show starting to, the show is starting to take off. People are starting to listen. You know why? They're picking up all our mistakes. Mm-hmm. So I have to go in here and find out where it is. Here it is. So the Horrible Gamers podcast, it is Jesus, oh, Eric. It's not Jesus. It is Jesus. Henley and Ryan. They are who they are. Mm-hmm. So he corrected us. And also you told, you had someone tell you that we didn't have a podcast player on one of the episodes Episode on our, 54 was on our playing. website. So I'm like, that's not true. I go over and I'm like, damn, they're right. Just get like tape hiss like back in the day at the EBK. Like, <laughs> no, there was nothing. That's there was what nothing. I mean. Maybe just be, okay, and here's the top 40 countdown. You hit the card like, yeah. Well, we used to do <laughs> tape hiss. We used to do that. We used to take and run it to the very end yeah. and then pull it out and not let it rewind. Right. So then when they would put it in, they would go, they would, <laughs> okay, you're going to hear something by, I don't know, Madonna. And they yeah. hit the button and it'd be like, and it was nothing. And then like, <laughs> ah! And sometimes if you wanted to be really evil, you, we would bulk the tape against a magnetic eraser and then put it back into the slot. Right. Or. We not that take, we, not that John and I would ever do something like what that. What we would do is we take the label off of the top. Oh, yeah, 40, mislabel it. And then <laughs> it, would, it would be sitting yeah. there and they would hit the button and it would go. And also we'd go, dead air, scramble. And then that would, we would record that on the thing and then they'd have to pull it out and they didn't know what to do with it. So anyhow. One time we, we mislabeled the PSA. It was because we used to have to do the public service announcements because we were at a community college. That's correct. And one of the PSAs was for like safe sex or something. But somebody switched it with another – something like it. it was supposed to be like the Seventh-day Adventist church or something like that because <laughs> they were doing the PSAs. Yeah. And the next thing you know, there's like sexually related message. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I forget who the dish jockey was behind the board. He, like, he went like blanched. He was like, wait, is a sheet? He was like scrambling, trying to get things. He didn't out. know what Brought to do. Brought to you by the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those high cheekery. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Epic Film Guys with Nick and Justin. Everyone has a podcast with Adam and Brian. And the Naked Porch Podcast with Ray, Danielle, and Chris. And, uh, you know, we're starting to get some Twitter followers, and we really appreciate it. Uh, I had some time today. If my computer didn't crash, I would have uh, got some names out here so we could have thanked you. But we really appreciate you engaging with us. Yeah. And Big thanks to Eddie for um, our fan, Eddie, who uh, pointed out the episode 54 mistake. Also, Brian Tulip Jr. He's a big fan. Always oh, yeah. He's everywhere. With us. Yeah, I, yeah, I really appreciate yeah. that. He's everywhere. Every time I want to he's all over the internet. <laughs> That's right. Uh, oh, and before we get out of here. I don't want to forget, Rocky started a new podcast, mm-hmm. and it's the Hunan Show. I think it's Hunan. Mm-hmm. And then Rocky got a timeout. Rocky was in Twitter jail. What for <laughs> what? What did he do? Yeah. I don't know. There was some kind of dust up over bands, like whether you liked Five Finger Death Punch or Seven Fingers Up Your Ass. I don't know what the other <laughs> band was called. So then he said something like, I, like if I, I don't like either of them, but if you had to hold a gun to my head, I'd rather have... Five wow, you're not allowed to have punch. an op- opinion? Yeah, I don't want seven fingers wow. up my ass. And so then the next thing you know, he was banned. So he got a Twitter ban. And then he's like, there you go, John. Now I'm banned. Like I had something to do with it. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Okay. Also, Stephen Bull uh, has been 
uh, sending the stories and stuff like that. And I don't know if I got to the ones that he sent us. I- I'm listen, I'm doing a horrible job. Doing a horrible job running this show. If, if, let me tell you something. Well, if that I was, board went down today. You know if I, mean? I was a manager, I would fire me. To be quite honest. You know what? Luke is right. We run a horrible show. What's this week? We shit? suck. Well, dude, I'm the best one of us, and if I suck, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I, you know what else I am? I'm humble. All right. Well, listen. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay. We done with all that now? Apparently so. The music ended. <laughs> but uh, next week, maybe I'll have a little bit more set up time and get everything. Won't be scrambling like we do. And uh, things will be a little bit better. Hopefully. And hopefully it won't be a trillion degrees here. Well, let me tell you a story. I mean, I know it's what not are we your living fault. on? No, I mean, I'm well, just saying I, how hot it's been. I had an week. air, I had an air conditioner all set up to go in here, and uh, they they left it outside on on the porch back there, and someone stole our air conditioner. So really? Now we got to get another air conditioner. Who, UPS left it or something? No, no. Big T. Oh. Had it. Let, just so you know, it wasn't a new air conditioner. Oh, that, when conditioner. you said they left it, I thought maybe you Big T one had from his, Amazon had or something. his air conditioner sitting on the back deck over there. He took and blew it out, cleaned it all out, and all that stuff. He's going to put it in this window, and then he went out there, and it was gone. So someone stole our damn air conditioner. Yeah, mm-hmm. great. So I would go right over to that uh, you might just in wait. the field there with those people that are squatting over there, and see if they have an air conditioner. Yeah, see if they suddenly have a new air conditioner. Well, maybe, maybe they took it stole. Might, maybe they took and uh, sold it. Might yes. have scrapped it. Mm-hmm. What you might want to do, it might be better. Well, I'll talk to you off mic about it. Yeah, but maybe it won't be so hot next time. Mm-hmm. Get peaked. All right, everybody, come on back next week. We'll be here. Good night, everyone. Have a good one. Will you shut the fuck up so I can end the recording? (laughs) That's it. We're just getting into it.